Welcome to another episode of Stocks to Watch for exclusive one-on-one discussions with company leaders to help you make informed investment decisions. I'm Ashley Barry, and we're welcoming Eric Entz, Chief Executive Officer and Director of Impact Analytics, Inc., which harnesses the power of data and AI to redefine financial risk management, working to develop next-generation solutions that aim to make financial systems more efficient, transparent, and reliable. They're listed on the Canadian Canadian Securities Exchange as PACT and in Frankfurt as 9YZ0. Eric, welcome. Excited for our conversation today. So am I. So Impact Analytics offers a very unique AI-powered solution to customers. Can you start maybe by introducing the company and your risk management technology to our viewers who are not yet familiar with it? Yeah, of course. So so we created Impact Analytics specifically to fill the gap in the world of risk management, both on the financial institution side as well as the consumer side. So I don't know how aware you are of traditional risk assessments, but those models can be time consuming. They're prone to human error and often based on a bit of a flawed archetype. Uh, So the risk assessment paradigm is kind of fractured. These large market players kind of operate within their own silos, creating a highly fragmented industry where you have these data oligarchs who kind of are the only the only ones with the data and the data used in these risk metrics, uh, sorry, these risk analysis metrics are kind of kept in house. So it's resulting in negative impacts on institutions, enterprises and consumers. We've got barriers for capital deployment and operational decision makers and these traditional models are tracking common transaction outcomes. And what we're doing with impact is we're focusing on the outliers. That's where we believe the real opportunity lies. It's kind of in the world of the unknown unknowns. We, we're we calling it quantum risk discovery because quantum is, is involved in unknown unknowns where you have all of the traditional ideas and the traditional metrics that everyone is kind of aware of historical spending patterns and all that stuff but we're really focused on the we're we're focused where no one else is looking and that's what we believe we can use to create a, a wedge in the industry Interesting. I like how you put that, where no one else is looking. Uh, your solutions uh, are offered to various industries, including the financial services, retail sectors. Um, this really enables companies in those industries to offer more value to their end customers. So in your view, how is the average customer in both the financial services and retail sectors benefited from providers using your risk management services? Yeah, so our mission really there is to empower intelligent decisions, data-driven decisions across, whether it be credit surveillance, underwriting, loan origination, uh, whatever the vertical might be. So we're working to develop a portfolio of products that fit into those specific silos, whether it be something for a financial uh, institution, that being the algorithm that we are developing, whether it be the retail solution, which is a standalone application that we're developing where those uh, where the users actually become the data source for what we're doing for the financial institutions, as well as the consumer, again, focused on the consumer individual decision making and how that can impact the financial services down the road. So what we're doing to affect and to fit into all all the silos that we're doing is building a patent portfolio of specific applications for those specific verticals. And I would have to imagine that it makes it so much easier for the customer at the end of the day to navigate, uh, you know, by using your analytics, by using AI. Can you kind of explain that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. navigate, it kind of opens up the world of what there is potentially for the consumer. A lot of consumers are are shut off from financial services. I think the number is about 20 to 25% of people in the US are either underbanked or completely unbanked. Now what that means is obviously they don't have access to traditional financial institutions that a lot of that a lot of people do have and I mean to tell a story about myself someone who is someone who isn't underserved. Uh, I went to to purchase a home recently and I was with a 40% down payment. I was denied a mortgage. I was denied access to a loan um, for ostensibly no reason. Um, if I, if they, I, I the conversation kind of fell off when they asked me for my investment portfolio. And uh, when I didn't provide that, everything kind of fell apart. So with that, with 
the access that we're providing to consumers or the hypothesis that we have that by making a more robust analysis tool, what we're going to do is open up a market for those underserved and under uh, um, underrepresented people to give them access to financial institutions, to make them less reliant on predatory payday loans, to make them less reliant on other other services that that might actually be more focused on taking their money rather than in uh, building them up. Yeah, very sorry to hear that you were denied. I can imagine when that happened, obviously, it's very upsetting. And then you're thinking, well, this is exactly why we're doing what we're doing at Impact Analytics, right? The the silver lining was, oh, there's the use case. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into Research Laundry, the seasoned team of developers uh, with an impressive track record in both tech and business development uh, is really behind the development of risk management solutions. Can you tell us about your track record in achieving successful exits and your plans for impact analytics? So Research Laundry is a, is a great development team we've partnered with to, to develop our standalone application portfolio, as well as the overall uh, analytics algorithm. So on that team alone, they've had about 10 successful exits, built over, built over $2 billion in market cap for their clients. They've run over 50 projects. They've sold companies to, to Zillow. They've had $100 million in funding for one of their projects happen. Um, Active Rain and Daily Ticket are two of their kind of more noteworthy projects in their portfolio. Uh, myself, I've had a few exits on some cannabis companies as well as some tech companies back in the day. Some successful, some not so successful. But we, uh, but overall, I think the team that we're building and the the power behind it is is pretty impressive. Specifically, that development aspect and some of the relationships that we're forming in. Uh, in the Asia Pac region as well, and I, we can get onto that a little bit later, uh, if you'd like. But our team is focused on the long run here. Uh, we we know that it's going to take a long time to build to build something that's truly valuable and truly makes sense and and truly adds value to both the financial services side of the world and to the consumer side of the world. And, you know, really by you giving your use case, as you were talking about, uh, you know, your experience with trying to purchase a home, what would you say to to the viewers? Um, you know, a lot of our viewers are millennials and Gen Z, and, you know, it's right up your alley, of course. Uh, you're a very successful businessman. Um, you know, you're you're creating this, developing this, this whole new world and what you're doing. It's the way of the future. Um, you know, how would you uh, encourage others to get interested and, and potentially invest in your company? First things first, what I'd like to say is definitely look at what we're doing around the, I mentioned a few times, the patent portfolio. We believe that some of the applications that we're building are not only beneficial to the overall algorithm uh, and the overall analysis process, but are going to be beneficial for users themselves, whether it be through something we're developing to, to offset merchant cash advances or whether it be micro lending and financial uh, um, financial literacy. So what I think for getting involved is just, I mean, first off, check out the website, send emails in based on any ideas that you might have around uh, what could help potentially in the in the consumer side of the, the financial services world. But also just look at what we're building, look at the team, look at the size of the industry that we're going to be playing in. It's a I, I, I mean, we I don't believe that we can address the twenty eight trillion dollar market. But if you look at even the small the mm -hmm. small estimates on the risk management and analysis side, we're still dealing with a fifty billion dollar market right now. So I think that the combination of our team, uh, along with the the pool that we're playing in, the the fact that it is a novel and fairly nascent place to play right now in the AI space that's not overcrowded by mega cap corporations. And it is it is very kind of niche and, and left on its own, kind of creates a nice little equation for a fairly high success metric. Well, listen, I think it is very admirable that you are willing to listen and learn from the audience. Uh, Eric Enns, Chief Executive Officer and Director of Impact Analytics, best of luck to you as you build this big portfolio of yours and continue to reach milestones. We'll see you again soon on Stocks to Watch. Thank you.